Hey Lash Babes, have you been wanting to become a lash artist? Make sure to check out my Yui's Plus membership where you can have access to my online courses from beginner to advanced styling, all from the comfort of your own home. You also gain access to never before seen content not found on YouTube. Members also save up to 50% off lash products with free shipping. To learn how to save money and take your skills to the next level, make sure to check the description box down below for more information. Real quick, guys, I just want to let you know that I am going to be in Houston, Texas from March 3 and 4. I'm going to be hosting a volume and wispy mega class with my good friend Irma from Alyssa Eyelashes. If you guys are interested, check out the link in the description box. <laughs> Hey Lash Babes, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to achieve this very wispy L curl look. For today's products, I'm going to be using the London Lash Primer and Sealer. I'm also going to be using my sensitive tape available in three colors. I'm also going to be using the Akisos iPads that you can find on Amazon. I'm also going to be using my Obsessed Glue. It is a very advanced glue, so it's very, very fast. And for the lashes, I'm going to be using the Lashbox LA L Curl Edition in 0.03. So here I'm just showing you guys how my lash tile is set up. I'm going to be using length 7 all the way to 12 millimeters. And for my tweezers, I'm going to be using my old collection coming out very, very soon. So you guys already know that I always have to start off by washing my client's lashes. I'm telling you guys, if you are missing this step, it is a huge reason of why your lashes are not sticking. So take an extra five minutes out of your time. I promise you guys when you guys start implementing this into your routine it's going to change the way that your retention sets so I'm actually using my wash me baby lash shampoo it is a 150 milliliter bottle so it is a big bottle if you're using this for your clients it's going to last you quite over six months i've been using mine up to nine months already and it's still going strong i still have a lot of product left and that's me using it three to four or five times a day so you could imagine i use it quite a lot and, and i still have a lot left in my bottle so again a big bottle is going to last you quite some time. The good thing about it too is that if you are looking to retail your own lash shampoos, then I recommend for you to look on my website. I do wholesale these so you could buy them in bulk and then sell them at full price. So if you guys are interested, I will have my website linked down below. And again, all the products that I'm using will be linked down below in the description box. So double check for the link and if for some reason I missed it, let me know in the comments down below. So at this point, you can already see that I'm going washing both eyes and you want to make sure that you are fully cleansing her lashes and making sure that you are removing any kind of oils eye creams dirt whatever it is that they might have under lashes not doing this step will just pretty much make your application process a little more tough especially uh, when you are dealing with clients if you don't know if they really wash their lashes or not i know a bunch of you guys don't like to include this because you feel like it's taking time out of you actually lashing them or it's taking away from the actual applying lashes application. So just, just keep that in mind. If you are struggling, your lashes are not sticking. And if you're sitting there holding an extension and you're wondering why it's not sticking, it's because you forgot to do the pre-application process, meaning you forgot to wash your lashes and you forgot to prime. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so at this point, I'm applying the Akisos iPads. Again, you can find these on Amazon. Hands down, the best iPads ever. I love these. I always go back to them. And I am applying my purple sensitive lash tape. These are perfect for taping down the bottom lashes and also working around the eyelid, lashing in layers, the tape bag method. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, I do have videos on my YouTube channel talking about this. So now I'm just going to start priming with the London Lash Primer. And you guys know that I need to prime. I know a lot of people have mixed feelings about this step alone. A lot of people say that you shouldn't be priming everybody and that priming is not necessary. And honestly, yeah, I I'll agree with them. But at least for me, it's something that I like to do because I like to make sure that those lashes are fully prepped and ready to go. Meaning that if you do this, a lot of primers do have alcohol. Alcohol primers will end up drying out the lash a little bit more meaning that when that glue attaches to that lash it's going to hold a lot better so again 
it's not a necessary step, but at least for me, it's something that I like to do because I know it's going to help me in the long run. So now I'm just going to start mapping. You guys know that I need to map no matter what. We are doing a wispy styling. So we are going to be using two different lengths. The bottom ones that I'm placing right now, it's going to be for my shorter lashes. And the ones at the top are going to be for my spikes. So I'm going to do 10, 9, 8, 7. Normally, I like to do a lot more sections, but this is what worked for me for this style. So for the spikes, I'm going to be doing 12, 11, 10, 9, and 8. So normally, I like to do 3 to 4 millimeters longer on my spikes, but because this is an L curl, I didn't want to go extremely long. So I ended up doing only 2 millimeters longer, and it still was very flattering and looked very beautiful. You can tell the difference between the spikes and the filler. So now I'm going to start working on the outside. For this type of style, I like to work on the starting on the outside, especially for the spikes, because I have a little more control of how the overall style is going to look. So if you don't know, I did do a previous L curl eyeliner effect styling. So I do have a video on a basic eyeliner effect. So if you want to learn the basics on how to do an L curl eyeliner like cat eye effect, I do have a more simpler version of this video on my channel. If you guys are interested, I recommend to learn that one first. That way this style makes a little more sense because I know when it comes to wispy styling, it is a little more advanced and it's kind of more tedious in a way. So right now, pretty much what I'm doing is I'm going to end up placing the spikes first. So all throughout the outer corner, I'm mainly going to be doing 12 mm, meaning I'm doing spikes. So technically spikes, if you don't know, spikes are volume flashes unfanned. I do have an online wispy course where I go more into depth on how to do a wispy styling. But because this is an L curl, it's a little more tedious. We're working with very straight lashes. But again, the same rules apply. So now that I did the outer corners, I counted a couple lashes towards the inner corner and I started placing another set of spikes. So I'm going for like more of a chunky, spiky look instead of doing every other lash. So every three to four lashes, I'm going to be counting and placing a spike. And when I do count and place a spike, I'm going to be placing spikes all throughout that little section that I'm working on. So as you can tell, I placed one spike. Now I'm going to find the next spike next to that one, not spike, natural lash. And then I'm going to place a spike there. So I know I probably confused you, um, but pretty much I'm working within sections within that section. So I am going to be going back and forth between both eyes. So if I place a spike on one eye, I'm going to place a spike on the other eye. You never want to be working on one eye, especially when you're dealing with this kind of styling, because if you're working on one eye, most likely you're going to get extension stuck. And just because of the way that I edit, the way that I record, it looks like I'm only working on one eye at a time, but I promise you guys, I'm going back and forth between both eyes. You want to make sure that you give that extension enough time to dry. So make sure whatever you do on one eye, you do on the other. So as you can see at this point, I'm pretty much working within sections. So as you can see, I have a third section down and I'm pretty much going for a chunky bold spike look. So I'm counting about four lashes over, as you can tell. I'm cutting four lashes over and I'm going to find my next section where I'm going to place another spike. When I find that section, then I'm going to work within that area and place about three to four spikes within that little section to create a bolder, chunkier spike, if that makes sense. So it's a lot easier for you to kind of just watch what it is that I'm doing because if I try to explain it, I know it sounds more confusing, but as you can see, I'm pretty much moving on to the next section and I'm going to place another spike. And within that section, I'm going to place a spike next to it and underneath it to create a chunkier looking spike. So it's pretty much three to four spikes within one single section. And it's going to make it look like it's one big actual chunk when it really isn't. It's just for them put together. So as you can see, I'm pretty much looking for the lash underneath it placing another, another spike underneath that one to create the illusion of that spike actually being chunkier. I hope that makes sense. I try to explain it in different terms so you guys can understand it because I know sometimes I don't make sense and you guys still ask questions. So I want to simplify it in different terms. That way it makes a little more sense. And for all of you guys that think I'm annoying for repeating myself, just remember everybody learns differently and it's easier for me to repeat myself in case somebody doesn't understand 
the terms that I'm using. So now I'm working within section nine and for this one I'm gonna be placing 11 millimeter spikes. So as you can see, I counted a few lashes over and I placed my first spike and then I placed a couple of spikes within that section to create a chunkier spike. So as you can see, now I'm moving on to the next section, again placing 11 millimeters within that section and then I'm gonna place a few more spikes within that little section that I'm working on to create a chunkier spike. I'm gonna do this all the way up until I get to section seven. And when we get to section seven, as you can tell, the inner corners don't have that many natural lashes as you do throughout the entire lash line. So we're only gonna do about a, a spike about every other lash. So that way it could kind of even out because again, we're working with less lashes, so you won't be able to create chunky spikes within a single section because you're only working with one layer compared to the other sections that have two to three layers of lashes, if that makes sense. So at this point, I'm gonna pretty much just let you guys enjoy what it is that I'm doing, and when I'm ready to come back to give you guys some more details or information, then I will be right back, but as of right now, I'm gonna let you guys enjoy with some cute little music, and I'll be right back. Okay, as you guys saw, I pretty much moved the tape and ended up pulling back the lashes, exposing the inner corners. This is something if you are struggling to really get in those inner corners, this technique is going to help you because as you guys saw, it pretty much just shifted the whole eye out towards the outer corners and it exposed those inner corners a lot better. I highly recommend it. I love using this technique. And also, I quickly wanted to mention that L Curl is a very, very tedious lash to work with but once you do get the hang of it it is such a beautiful lash to carry especially for those clients who don't for the life of you can't seem to hold on an extension and this is something that I've always struggled and could never for the life of me figure out why someone no matter what it is that I did could not get good retention and it just never occurred to me that it was the actual 
curl or the extension that I was placing on them. So no matter if it was a C or a CC or a D curl, the extension was just not holding onto that natural lash. It wasn't until I switched over to an L curl where they're coming back at two, three weeks with amazing retention. Like I have never been able to achieve that kind of retention on this client here once until I, I switched over to an L curl. So if your client seems to have very straight lashes that point down to the ground and no matter what curl you place on them, no matter if you wash and pry, no matter what you do, they cannot hold a curl or an extension, just switch them over to an L curl. Because the base is very, very straight, it's going to attach to the natural lash so beautifully and trust me it's going to change the way those those extensions hold on to that natural lash and you're going to be surprised that they could actually keep extensions on so i highly recommend this and i i, I will tell you guys and it's proven l curl is a way to go especially for someone with very straight lashes someone who can't hold an extension or someone who just can't they just don't last at all so just keep that in mind that there are different types of extensions out there for everyone. And again, C and D curl and those basic other curls are not meant for everybody. So just know that you do have extensions like this where you can play around with them and achieve different looks. And again, something like this will look so beautiful on somebody that has almond shaped eyes. But also remember that L curl or this type of styling, because it is technically supposed to be a cat eye, it's not going to look good on everybody, especially somebody that has very hooded eyes or monolid eyes or somebody with very droopy outer corners. Just keep that in mind that this style is not going to look good on everybody, but it is a good way to play our wand with this curl. So now I'm just going to seal the deal with sealer pretty much super bonder and this is going to help ensure that that glue fully dries and fully cures and it's also going to maximize retention at this point i'm just fanning her out making sure that everything is nice and dry you never want your clients to walk out with wet lashes or have any kind of irritation because you didn't fully dry her out so normally i'd like to give it about five minutes to fully make sure that those extensions are really dry and now i'm going to pull off the ipads and the tapes so that is pretty much it for this set. If you guys did like, make sure to hit that like button. If you are new here, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you guys can be notified every time I post a new video. Also, don't forget to go check out my website and my products. I will have the link down below for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Oh my God, they're so pretty. They're super so pretty. pretty. Yeah. So beautiful.